Hello, welcome to Reptile for You. Today we're working on that we have a dirty Amiga 1200 you saw at the start. Now we're going to be doing some major upgrades for this today. We're going to be installing a Pi Storm. Obviously, we're going to be cleaning the keyboard. And we're also going to be installing a Go Drive, which is in Digital Retro Bay. Now his site's up here, his site link is down below. Please check out Donamic. His devices are brilliant. Now I've not been paid by Dominic to install this and review this and put this in my videos. I've actually gone out and bought one of these because they were so impressed with the things. So join me after the short intro and we'll crack on with getting the Amiga sorted. So welcome. Today we work on this, this A1200. Now, I've been after one of these for a while and it's thanks to 8-Bit Retro Refix, big shout out to you, that I managed to get a hold of one. Now I have tested this and it displayed the kickstart and I loaded the game on it and it worked. So that's a bonus. The only thing is, you can see here, it's very dirty. Yes, it needs some love and also, otherwise it's in good condition, but it does have a Light cigarette burn there, but we're gonna have to live with that for now. I do have another case, but it's very yellow, and this one is quite clean. I think it will clean up well. So my plan is to make this my main Amiga, because 1200 is the best Amiga by far. I think I did want one of these when I was younger. I could never afford one. So it's my first A1200 I've actually owned, apart from one upstairs that doesn't work that came in loads of bits so that wasn't really a complete a1200 it's more of a jigsaw of parts so it's my first one it's going to be well looked after so today we're going to pimp it up a bit we're going to give it a clean and we're going to pimp it up with some upgrades and mods so let's first have a look at those upgrades and mods we're going to fit so in box number one we have the first upgrade and this is Probably guessed it by now. Another Pi Storm. Now I was that impressed with a Pi Storm in the 600. I thought I want to try one of these in the 1200. So I went ahead and I purchased this Pi Storm 32 Lite. You can see they're always called Light Editions. I've no idea why. It's just what they're called. So that's a lovely piece of hardware. There. I mean, it looks very well made. You can see nice soldering. And this is just a matter of slotting in and slotting the pie on. And the pie I'm going to be using again is a Raspberry Pi Zero Two. Now they seem to work very well with these, and obviously the small form factor, and obviously the power issue gone that isn't with a three B. So hopefully that should go in well. Now I plan to use the SD card like I did with the six hundred and partition it into different hard drives for the workbench, etc., and also. The games and demos, etc. So let's hope we can get that installed and working. Second, well, this is not a mod, it's more of an upgrade, is Workbench OS 3.2. So we're going to get this installed, Amigo OS 3.2. This is a genuine copy that I actually bought and purchased. Now, I suggest you do purchase this and you don't buy and burn your own ROMs because. Where's the fun in that? And also, you got to provide the money to the software companies to develop this amazing OS. I mean, where would we be with Amiga without an OS 3.2? So, there's my Kickstart ROMs there, the low and the high, ready to go in the A1200. So it's as simple as that. All the ADFs are on a CD. I need to load them onto a Gold Tech drive, etc., and install them like I did last time. So, the next thing I'm going to fit is a Gold Tech drive. Because I love GoTech drives. Like I said before, we fitted one in the 500 plus with all the wires, etc. And it was great fun. But unfortunately, we're not going to fit this today because I've discovered something new. So this now is going to have to be binned. So farewell. I think I might have broke something then. Oh well. So let's crack on with what's coming out next. So the third and final mod is in this box. So when I went to the Amiga show, the Yorkshire Amiga group meets. I met a guy, I met him a few times, his name was Dominic. And this guy, he's a great guy to talk to. He's, just, he's a good egg. 
and I got speaking to him. He's great to talk to. He's been in the Amiga scene a long time, and he had this device on his Amiga. I was looking at it, and it opened my eyes. I thought, this is a really, really cool thing. I actually asked him about it, and he showed me how he designed it, etc., and what he wanted to achieve with it. This guy's been in the Amiga scene for a long time. He loves his Amigas. He grew up with the Amiga scene, and he was involved in the demo scene with the music, etc. So this has been designed with a lot of love for the Amiga, and he wanted to give something back to the community. And this thing he's designed is just utterly amazing. I mean, you can't go wrong with these things. I mean, I can't wait to fit it and try it. So this is his site here, Digital Retro Bay. This is a device we're going to fit. Now, you might think it's a GoTech. It's not a GoTech. It's called a Go Drive. It's a re-engineered GoTech. It's everything the GoTech should have been or strives to be. This guy has re-engineered it to something really, really good. So, can't wait to get this fitted and I'll show you it all working. I will put the link below. So, check out the link below to his website. Make sure you pop along and you have a look at these things. They're great. So, what we're going to do we're going to get this open and we're going to have a look what's inside the box. So inside the box, the first thing we are presented with is this piece of paper here. On here is a QR code. You scan that and it takes you to a video instructions on how to actually fit this thing. It's really handy, that is. Also in here is a wire adapter for your floppy drive power and your go drive power. On this cable, you can see here it's very well made it's not a cheap cable saves you making your own and this is top quality stuff man. so what else have we got here this is the first thing here in this now in here we have the breakout box you might think you've seen these before it's the same as a GoTech. it's very similar yeah but it does have some differences for a start you've got a usb port here now that's very handy because you're not plugging inside the computer trying to find it. So it's easy access. Your revolving selector here with your push button, of course, for selecting for directories, etc. And also you have an extra switch here, which will switch between F, which is your floppy drive, and G, which is your go drive. So you can have both drives fitted, of course, and still use your floppy drive and also the GoTech facility. Now the screen is bigger than the GoTech. It's not as big as the one I fitted on the A500, but it's a happy medium. It's neither big or it's small. It's the right size, I'd say. Also, you've got an LED here, which tells you when the GoTech is selected or the floppy drive, etc. And the quality of the print is really good. It feels nice and heavy. It doesn't feel too cheap. It looks like it's very, very high in film, maybe 100%, I don't know, but the quality is, is really, really good. You can see here, no blemishes or anything, and it's very well designed, and it just clips onto your A1200 case. Now, behind, this is the first part of it. You see here, Digital Retro Bay, design 2022, and it's the breakout box, and it's all designed very well. This is your first part of your board. It has a ribbon here, which is here, which connects to one side and to your board. Now this ribbon is designed for the right size, so it fit for your events, so you don't have to cut anything. So again, he's thought about everything when designing this. Because he knows people don't want to be cutting their A1200 to pieces, because it's getting hard to find decent A1200 cases. I mean, look at mine, it's got a cigarette burn on it, and I've got another one that's yellow, so I don't want to be cutting them up. So this is the final part of the puzzle. This is the actual Go Drive E1200. Now, he does different versions of this. He does ones for the 500, for the 600, etc. And they're all designed to fit inside the computer. Now, basically, what they do is, you see this connector here? They plug onto your floppy drive, etc. onto your board, like so. And from here, your floppy drive will be fed. Then you've got your wire adapter that will feed your floppy drive. And also... Your power as well on here, which will go to power this go drive here. And there's your go tech chip there, basically. And obviously your ribbon will go there straight out to your breakout box where you got full control. Now the quality of these is very good. It's not cheaply done. You can tell he's put a lot of thought into designing this board. And 
it looks really cool. There you go, Digital Retro Bay again. And it's very well soldered. Can't see anything to complain about this board. It's really nice. I saw these, like I say, and I thought these were amazing. Also, you've got this. Yes, it's a speaker. So it emulate the sound of the floppy disk like it's reading. So you get that familiar click, click, click. Like it's reading a proper disk. What we need to do is we need to get this installed into the 1200 and get it set up with MU68. But to install the OS, etc., we're going to be using this to go drive 1200. So without this, we'd have been lost because we could put all the workbench disks on this and install onto this. So in conjunction, they work with it. So they work very well together. They're even the same color. Look at that. Made to be together. So let's crack on with getting this A1200 sorted. So welcome back to the 1200. The first thing I'm going to do is try and get this keyboard cleaned and get it stripped out. So we're going to strip it out and then we're going to try cleaning the keyboard. What I'm going to do is pull all the caps. I'm going to put them in the ultrasonic cleaner. I've not used the ultrasonic cleaner on these. So it could go wrong. It could go bad. Hopefully it will clean them all up. So we're going to give it that a try. I've got a bit of washing up liquid in there. I've got it heating up to 50 degrees. Um, we're going to stick all these in and give them 10 minutes in the ultrasonic cleaner and see what happens. Hopefully it won't take all the letters off, but you never know. It's the first for everything. If you do, I'll leave it on the video for us. So let's see how we get on. You can see here somebody has modified power supply in here. So what we're gonna do, we're just gonna pull them off. I actually need them, do we? And we can put that to one side because it's not good anymore. The capacitors all look good. We need to swap these two ROMs out here. So as we did with A600, we're gonna pull all these dirty keys off. So listen to some music while we crack on with that. If you're doing this, these two springs here, slightly different sizes in the space bar, so to keep them separate. Otherwise, if you're trying to find them in this lot, you got no chance. Here's the ultrasonic bath. I've no idea if it's going to work, how it's going to work.
So that's another six minutes done now. What I'm going to do is take these out, leave them to drip off a bit. I don't want to lose anything in there. I can tell now they do look a hell of a lot cleaner. That was no effort, really, was it? You just press a button. So what we're going to do is move this out of the way. Electricity and water is never a good idea. Of course, if you do it safely, it's fine. So we're just going to move this out of the way. So I've got this lovely towel, and we're just going to put them all onto here. That's all the keys. They look quite clean, to be honest. Quite happy with results. I mean, maybe it's better to do them by hand, but they have worked. So that's all the keys ready. I'm going to leave them, like I said, to dry overnight. And I carry on working on this Amiga tomorrow. But for now, see you the next day. So it's a new day. So just chill, listen to some music while we get this keyboard built back up.
So, there you have it. It's all done. Doesn't it look a lot better? There's still some slight yellowing around here. But the main thing is it's clean. And, like I said, it looks so much better. So, what we're going to do now is to switch to Amiga. And we're just going to crack on with that and start doing the upgrades and mods. So, join me on the Amiga. Well, welcome back to the Amiga. What we're first going to do is just remove this floppy drive cable here. It's going to get in the way anyway. Installing the other thing. Also, I think I have a bit of a spider here. Bit of a crispy spider. So we can get rid of that because we don't need that. So what we're going to do first is going to pull these two ROMs. Easy enough. We've got the ROM puller. Because we're dealing with ROMs and chips again, I'm going to use my ESD band. So hopefully you see those two problems now anyway, and I just need to get the ROM puller in each side. I'm going to do this and get on camera. And we'll just pull it out like so. Same again with the one. Hold the board down a bit. I'll just pull it out like so. So, what we've got two ROMs here. We have, we have the high and we have the low. Now, you'd think it'd go this way high, low, but it goes low, high. The so low, low, up here. Right, I will shove that in place like that, making sure no legs are bent. And that looks like that's in. And then obviously the high will go underneath. Like so. Making sure that the half moon cut out is facing that way towards the half moon. Now you will get one set of pins unused at the end. Don't worry about that. That's not unusual. But the way the ROMs are, they're always one pin short. So that's it for that. That was an easy upgrade, wasn't it? So it now has kickstart 3.2. So the next thing we'll do is remove this trapdoor here to make it easier to fit the pie storm. So we're just going to click that out like so and remove it out of the way. Easy peasy. So because we're going on this edge connector here, I just want to give that a quick clean with some IPA and a cotton wool bud. Grab the IPA. Clean cut wall but down here. It's always good to give these a clean before installing everything. Because you can see there the amount of muck that's coming off it. And the same on the other side. I've noticed there's a screw missing out of this board here. There should be a screw there to hold that in place. Here we've got one in a bit. As this is going to be my main Amiga. So, it's as simple as that. That's it, that's just good clean. So, get the pie store. Sit in here. And... We'll get this installed and ready to go now. So this is a pie storm here. Now you might think that the pie fits this way on. It doesn't. Bad mistake. It goes actually from the back here through these holes. And then this is for a thermal pad which goes onto the pie to help conduct some of the heat. So what we're going to do, we're going to install this into the slot now. It can only fit in one way because you can see that it's keyed here. So you need to go in from underneath the Amiga. Like so. And then you need to line it up and push it in place. Now, it does take some force, this does. So, oh, just like so. And you can see it's clipped into place. You can see there how it's clipped into place. Now, that's that pie storm installed. And the actual pie will sit on the top here. So, what we're going to do next is we're going to install the pie. 
So let's get this Pi Storm installed. What you need to do first is you need a thermal pad, like I said. And this thermal pad is a one mil thermal pad and it sits over this here. Just like so. Now this is a bit bigger, but it doesn't really matter, does it? I can cut that to size if I want. I'll just slice that off like so. So there's a one mil thermal pad installed, which sits over that. Now, the Pi I'm going to be using again is the Pi 02W, which I like these due to the size of things. So, obviously, this thermal pad here will sit over the CPU. Can you see that? That should line up. So, what you do is you just press this over here, as simple as that, and slot it into place. And you can see there now, well, you can't really see, but the thermal pad is there, which is helps conduct the heat between the board and the CPU so it doesn't overheat. So that's it installed for now. So like I said, the Pi 32 Lite is easy to install. It's just simple. Just make sure you've got the thermal pad, etc., and a decent Pi. You can put a 3 in there, but obviously it's bigger. So one more hint I'll give you. So now that's installed, what you need to do is to get some black tape, some insulation tape. So you just need some standard black insulation tape and you just need to tape over these pins here or that will stop it from shorting on the back of the keyboard. It's as simple as that really. So that's the Pi 32 Lite installed. What I'm probably going to do now is end this video here. So you made it to the end of the video. Unfortunately, I couldn't finish all the upgrades and mods. This video seemed to go on for a long time. So I'm going to do it in a two-parter. Part two is being recorded at this moment and is being edited. So hopefully it'll be out midweek, maybe the end of the week. I can't promise anything. It depends how long it takes and what time I've got free. So next video, we're going to be fitting the Gold Drive, the excellent device, like I said before, from Digital Retro Bay. So please go check, him out, check out that website. Check out the link below, of course. And also, if you're new here, Please hit the like button. Please hit the subscribe button if you like this type of content. I try to upload once a week. Also, why here as well, please check out the links below to my fellow YouTubers, 8-Bit Retro Refix, Joseph Retro Bits, and Captain Commodore. End of the month, we all get together and we do a live stream. So just pop along, come ask us a question, anything. Just come and have a laugh with us all. So that's it for now. And I shall see you next time on Reptile for You. Thanks a lot, guys. Bye.